Hello everyone, this is Bell's Books and we can be found online at abooks.com. So this is my video on H.G. Wells that I mentioned in my H.P. Lovecraft video. Herbert George Wells, 1866 to 1946, was an English writer whose most notable works include The Time Machine, 1895, The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1896, The Invisible Man, 1897, The War of the Worlds, 1898, and the military science fiction The War in the Air, 1907. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature four times, although he never won. In 1932, he was a serious candidate, but lost to John Galsworthy, who received the prize for his Forsyth Saga. Wells had envisioned a utopian government which would ensure that every individual would be as well educated as possible, especially in science, have work which would satisfy them, and the freedom to enjoy their private life. His interests in society and technology were closely entwined. Wells also predicted and inspired inventions from the laser, that haven't yet come true. So the list of books that were auctioned recently are The First Men in the Moon, published 1909. This book recently sold for $2,750. This is a scientific romance originally serialized in the Strand Magazine from December 1900 to August 1901. A hardcover was then published in 1901. C.S. Lewis stated that his science fiction books were both inspired by The First Men in the Moon to be the best sort of science fiction I have read. It's especially visible in Out of the Silent Planet, the first book of Lewis's space trilogy. The second book is Things to Come, published 1936. This book recently sold for $1,375. One historian was quoted as stating, Things to Come qualifies as the first true masterpiece of science fiction. Those who complain about its awkward pace and uninvolving characters are not understanding Wells' message which is that the lives and actions of individuals are unimportant when compared to the progress and destiny of the entire human race. This next version of the book is The Shape of Things to Come. This was published in 1933 and recently sold for $2,750. The third book, Love and Mr. Lewisham, this was published in 1900, and it recently sold for $593.75. Love and Mr. Lewisham, subtitled The Story of a Very Young Couple, is a 1900 novel set in the 1880s. It was among his first fictional writings outside the science fiction genre. Wells took considerable pains over the manuscript and said that the writing was an altogether more serious undertaking than I have ever done before. He later included it in a 1933 anthology, Stories of Men and Women in Love. Events in the novel closely resemble events in Wells' own life. According to Wells, referring to the question of autobiography and fiction, it is not so much what one has done that counts as where one has been. And the truth of that statement is particularly evident in this novel, with the commonalities between the main character and Wells parallel throughout the book. Loving Mr. Lewisham was well received, and critics have even praised the novel as a close examination of the relationship between class and the emotions. The next book is 30 Strange Stories, published 1897. 
This book recently sold for $575. 30 Strange Stories contains 10 of the best stories from the stolen basilicus and other incidents, 17 from the platinum story, and three new stories, The Reconciliation, The Raja's Treasure, and The Marie Terrible. The next book is The Time Machine. This was published in 1895. This book sold for $10,000. The Time Machine was published in 1895 and was written originally as a frame narrative. A section from the 11th chapter of the serial was published in New Review, May of 1895, and then was deleted from the book. This portion of the story was published elsewhere as The Gray Man and in an issue of the American edition of Perry Ladon. The next book is The History of Mr. Polly. This was published in 1910 and it recently sold for $2,000. This book was inspired by H.G. Wells' early experiences in the drapery trade and received mostly enthusiastic reviews. It has been called a complete comic miracle and a wonderful incarnation of what might have happened to Wells without an education. But Wells says his protagonist was based not on himself, but on his elder brother Frank. The next book is The War of the Worlds, published 1898, and it recently sold for $2,750. The War of the Worlds was first serialized in 1897, published by Pearson's Magazines in the UK and by Cosmopolitan Magazine in the US. Wells was only paid 200 pounds and Pearson's demanded to know the ending of the piece before committing to publish. The novel's first appearance in hardcover, however, wasn't until 1898 when it was published by William Heinemann of London. This publication has been in print ever since. So The War of the Worlds has been both popular for having never been out of print, but mostly for its 1938 radio program directed by and starring Orson Welles. It allegedly caused a very real panic among listeners who didn't know the story was fictional. The idea for the novel actually came from his brother during a walk in 1895 in Surrey, so much of the book takes place in that surrounding area. The next book is When the Sleeper Wakes. This was published in 1899 and it recently sold for 900 $38. This is a dystopian novel and was first published in serial form in the graphic between 1899 and 1903. In 1910, Wells then expanded the story into a full-length novel published by Harper Brothers. There is a difference in the two publications in that the 1899 publication has 329 pages and the 1910 version has only 288. Now both versions of the story follow the same basic framework, but in Wells' own words, the earlier version was written under considerable pressure. There are marks of haste not only in the writing of the latter part, but in the very construction of the story. In the 1910 edition, Wells also brought the flying machines up to date. The next book is The Food of the Gods and How It Came to Earth. This was published in 1904 and it recently sold for $1,625. When this was published, Wells called it a fantasia on the change of scale in human affairs. He had hit upon the idea while working out the possibilities of the near future in a book of speculations called Anticipations published in 1901. It was also adapted for comics in January 1961 for Classics Illustrated and Marvel Classics Comics. The next book is The Invisible Man, published 1897 
and it recently sold for $500. This was originally published in Pearson's Weekly in 1897 and as a novel the same year. The novel is considered influential and helped establish Wells as the father of science fiction. Children's literature was a prominent genre in the 1890s, but Wells and his contemporaries essentially wrote boys' books for grown-ups. The next book is The Island of Dr. Moreau, published 1896, and it recently sold for $2,375. Wells described this as an exercise in youthful blasphemy. It's a classic work of early science fiction and remains one of Wells' best-known books. At the time of the publication, there was growing discussion in Europe of the possibility of the degeneration of the human race. Inspired by the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Wells designed Moreau's Creatures to echo the conflict between the civilized and bestial aspects of humanity, as suggested by Stephen's novel and Darwin's theory. So those are the books that I wanted to bring to you this week. I hope that you liked them. I'm still trying to work out that balance of happy medium, bringing you fun facts without making it too long or boring. So again, thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one.